Oh, hello there. You've just interrupted me as I'm about to put in a lovely keg of Jupler into the perfect draft machine. Uh, no doubt this will be a keg I'll be reviewing in the future. Let's just do that now. There we go. So yes, we're coming up to me having had a perfect draft machine for about two years. So I was thinking about doing a video which was going to be a compilation of all the previous perfect draft kegs that I've reviewed before. But all of those reviews are going to be here together in one handy video. So if you are new to perfect draft, like say for example you've bought the new perfect draft pro or you've acquired, you've acquired uh, the older model, then consider this to be your handy buyer's guide. So yes, I've had a few new toys to play with this month, but I just wanted to mention one more. The Philips Perfect Draft Machine. Now this is also going to be going into my bar as well, but at the moment it's currently living in my kitchen. I ordered this from Beehawk for £274 for the pump, a 6 litre keg, which is approximately 10 pints, of Magic Rock Brewery's High Wire Grapefruit Pale Ale, and two matching glasses to go with it. The kegs alone can vary from £29 to £39, depending on what you order. I've also ordered a uh, Ho Garden and a couple of kegs from Tiny Rebel, uh, Club Tropica and Cali Pale. Oh, and uh, Corona Extra seemed to be on a special offer at the moment, for some reason. Uh, that also comes with two matching pint glasses as well. You also get £5 back on every empty keg that you send back to them, and you get beer tokens as well. It took a while for the beer to settle, and we had to wait overnight for the cask to be chilled to perfection, but you can always get into the habit of keeping a cask in the fridge if you've got more than one. It's expensive for what it is, but you really do get a perfect pint pod every time, which is ideal for those interested in setting up their own pub at home. It's the perfect draft keg of the month! And this month, we've gone back to the first beer that I ordered with my Perfect Draft. In fact, this is the keg that came with it as part of the pack. It's Magic Rocks High Wire Grapefruit IPA. Really enjoyed this the first time round, so I bought it again. The brewery is based in Huddersfield, so it's not too far from me, haha, uh -huh, supporting local businesses. Uh, and the beer has a hazy amber colour with a lovely grapefruit aroma and a taste that follows. Great aftertaste, with plenty of bitterness making you want to take another drink. Excellent stuff, very drinkable and well recommended. We're going to open up the perfect draft machine and see what we've got in there this month. Yes, it's time for that segment of the programme where we have the perfect draft keg of the month. And this one from Thornbridge Brewery, we've got Jalper being served in the pub shed. I've quickly become a fan of Thornbridge ever since I tried out their Shelby IPA, the official beer of the Peaky Blinders TV series. Now I have to admit, I wasn't expecting much for what was likely going to be a short-lived beer made as a television tie-in, but you got a couple of free glasses if you ordered some for the perfect draft, so I gave them a go and I was very pleasantly surprised and since then have ordered more Shelby in for the bar as well as some of uh, Thornbridge's other beers that are available on Perfect Draft. So Yalpa is a citrusy fresh IPA with a smooth texture that leads to plenty of hoppiness and honey in the taste. Uh, finished off with a nice little bitter finish at the end. Very drinkable and well recommended. So oh, yes, as I've already mentioned, Lef Blonde is the perfect draft keg of the month this time round. This is a pale abbey beer with a gorgeous sunny golden colour that is very pleasing to look at in the glass. It has a smooth and full bodied taste and a rich creamy head that makes this very pleasant and very easy to drink. Lightly bitter with a sweet malty caramel and honey background with the tiniest hints of lemon. It's one of the reasons why I've ordered more beers from Lef. And if they're all going to be as good as this one, then I'm going to have some great beers to drink on the run up to Christmas. As mentioned in my previous episode, I decided to give Stella Artois a go on Perfect Draft because it was on special offer at the time. And you got some free glasses, beer mats and a stainless steel 
foam skimmer with it from Beerhawk. So now that we've got it in the perfect draft, what is it like? Oh, look at that. Bit heady. Bit heady. Okay. <laughs> oh, but you can use the uh, scraper. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's a waste of beer. <laughs> You're probably wondering, why am I looking at something like Stella Artois on a beer review show about craft ales? Well, that is a good point. I should mention, however, that the version of Stella Artois on Perfect Draft is in fact the Belgian Leuven version, which is rather different to the Stella that is produced in Blackburn and sold to supermarkets and pubs across the UK. This Belgian version is a far superior beer to what we usually get in this country, and if you're going to be drinking Stella, this is really the only way to be doing it. I promise you, if you get the chance to try this Leuven version, you may never touch the British version ever again. So by all means, give it a go. The People's Choice Award went to Tiny Rebel. Um, their Key Lime Lager was meant to be in the box this month as part of the light case selection, but uh, I didn't get this as I had the, the mixed case. Uh, but I have already, I have already tried uh, Key Lime Lager and, on Perfect Draft and very much enjoyed it. It's a crisp and hoppy lager uh, with a refreshing twist of Key Lime. Although, to be honest, I think they probably should have released this a little sooner in the year, maybe in the summer. Um, it's definitely more of a, of a summer beer. Um, drinking this was just making me long for the sunny days on the beach to return, so... I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll be getting another keg of that uh, when the warmer weather returns. For today's video, I'm going to talk about two perfect draft kegs that I really enjoyed over Christmas. Lef Noel and Magic Rock Dark Arts. The latter of which was actually a Christmas present. <laughs> Santa knows me so well. So let's go on to the review of Lef Noel first. And as you can see, I've got a proper Lef glass to drink this from. I'm holding it up to the light here, but you can clearly see that lovely amber colour. And with the compact white foam head, it really does look like the sort of beer that Saint Nick himself would enjoy. There's a nice sweetness on the aroma, nothing particularly Christmassy, but still very pleasant. Uh, a bit of caramel on the nose there. So upon taking a drink of this little beauty, we're getting a nice, smooth, rich, full-bodied beer with a hit of sweet caramel in there and a hint of winter spice. Um, this was very nice, very drinkable, and I'm glad that I ordered more than one keg of this before Christmas because it went down very easily, uh, especially with the roast turkey dinner. I've got a proper Magic Rock pint glass to drink this from. Uh, this pours out as a jet black beer with a lovely head of chocolatey foam. Uh, gorgeous aromas of chocolate and caramel. It looks like Guinness when you take a look at it, but uh, upon taking a drink, you realise, oh no, this isn't Guinness, it's, uh, it's better. Upon taking a drink, you're getting a lovely, smooth, smoky flavour with chocolate, coffee, vanilla, toffee, licorice and caramel. Oh my word, what a pint. This is everything that a stout should be. I've had this before in a can, but on perfect draft, it's completely on another level. It's wonderful. Would I buy this again? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is uh, definitely the big daddy of the left beers. So the reason why I've put off reviewing it for a while is because, right, I'm going to have some, I'm going to wait until I've got some time booked off from work because I certainly don't want to have it when I have a few of these and then I have to get up for work the next morning. I mean, can you imagine? Oof. Let's get this poured out. As you can see, it has a lovely burnt amber colour with a good creamy head of slightly off-white foam. Uh, the beer is slightly hazy in appearance with a steady amount of carbonation coming up through the glass. It has a really nice sweet vanilla and banana type smell to it, um, which seems to be a common thing I found amongst, uh, amongst left beers. It seems to be like their, their trademark thing, if you like. So, let's have a taste of this. Uh, again, that sweet vanilla and banana is coming through, like in previous left beers that we've reviewed. But straight away, you can tell that this is a stronger 
type of beer. However, it's not strong to the point of it being overpowering and there is a really nice, rich flavour to this. It's lovely and smooth and it's quite sweet and yeasty. It's a really good bodied beer that makes for a really, really good pint. Uh, for me, this might just be the best left beer available on Perfect Draft, which is high praise indeed. Um, this comes highly, highly recommended. So next up we're trying out the uh, Hertog Jan from the Netherlands. Uh, this is another favourite of mine. I've actually had this um, a couple of times now and it's like, right, I really must, I really must review this at some point, but um, before I can do so, I've normally drunk the bloody thing and not been able to do so. So I thought, right, I'm, I'm, this is the third time I'm getting it. I'm actually going to review the damn thing this time. So this pours out as a golden straw colour with about two fingers of white foamy head. Uh, very light on the carbonation. It's quite malty on the aroma with some hints of, uh, of sweet caramel. So let's dive in and have a taste. Uh, on the flavour, it's malty, it's sweet, we've got caramel in there, we've got toffee, it's biscuity, it's bready. It's a good, solid body of beer that is very easy to drink. Um, this is fresh and crisp and makes for a lovely, lovely pint. Uh, very drinkable indeed. And again, this is one of my absolute favourites on the Perfect Draft Machine. So again, another one that's highly recommended from me. So, on to the Francis Carnet. And I'm drinking this particular beer with my friend Josh. And you'll see that we've got Miko sat in the middle there, enjoying the atmosphere. Um, okay, so a nice colour of the pint. A lovely hazy orange colour to it. Uh, great levels of carbonation running throughout the glass. Josh got a single finger of foam, I got about two fingers. I blame whoever poured the pint. Uh, smells wonderful to begin with. There's uh, banana, clove, spices. You really get a sense of the wheat in this uh, in this Weiss beer. Uh, upon having a taste, though, same sort of wheat flavour. That's it. Wheat flavours come through into the taste as well. Uh, the drinkability of this is absolutely wonderful. Uh, there's a fantastic creamy mouthfeel to this. Uh, the yeast comes through into this brilliantly. Um, this was very quickly finished off over the space of a weekend and uh, uh, it's quickly become one of my favourites on, uh, on Perfect Draft. This is the first time that I've had it and uh, I'll definitely be getting another keg of this very, very soon. So first up we have Hogarden, a Belgian wheat beer that's had over 500 years of hard work going into it to make it feel like you're pouring the sun out into your glass. Now I used to really enjoy drinking a pint of Hogarden at this uh, Mexican themed pub that I used to, uh, to drink in. Uh, unfortunately it's not there anymore but it seemed to be the only place that I knew that, that did Hogarden. So I was really looking forward to the idea of having like a proper hand pulled pint of Ho Garden again and as you can see yeah. I already have a trained bartender in the Mabba's Tavern to pour one out for me. Thank you son. That's it. Strain it up. Just put it, yeah, put it on the counter. Oh, a bit of a massive head on it son. It's, it's not usually like that, okay? <laughs> ah! Thank you very much there, barman. Let's just step back, in fact, let's just step forwards here. So we've got ourselves, just turn the glass around. We've got a lovely, hazy, orange colour there. We've got a lovely finger of foam on it, and especially now that it's settled down. We've got about a finger and a half of foam there. Turn it around. Let's uh, give it a sniff. Oh. That's lovely. Yeah, all the familiar memories of having this before is coming back. Lovely and can smell the wheat, can smell the floral. Lovely smell to it. Right, let's get stuck in. Oh, brilliant. Again, all the memories come flooding back of having this before. This is a gorgeous warm beer, lovely taste, very drinkable, 
very sessionable, could quite easily drink these all afternoon. Um, yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Very pleased with that one. Oh, excuse me. Might not be for everyone, but for me, that's one of the best ones on Perfect Draft. Right. Thank you very much, Barman. I'll have another one of these in a bit when you're ready. So next up, it's time to try out another German beer on Perfect Draft. Here we've got Lauenbrau, Lauenbrau Original. Brewed since 1383, Lauenbrau is still produced in exactly the same way it was all those years ago in Munich, Germany, and it remains a favorite throughout Europe as we're about to find out. There is also a Lohenbrau Oktoberfest keg, um, but this only gets a seasonal release and it does tend to sell out rather quickly. So if you do get the chance to uh, get hold of that, then by all means do so. I missed the chance to get the Oktoberfest one, but I will certainly oh, try and get it out. again for next time. What a brilliant pint that is. Lovely colour on that. Nice golden colour. About a finger of foam there. Got some good levels of carbonation going off there. Right, let's have a drink of this. Oh, oh, oh that's brilliant. That's just what you need. I mean, it's a it's a hot, humid day today, and that is just absolutely perfect. Very drinkable as well. You you have a drink of this, and it's like it encourages it encourages you to drink more. Oh, that is a top quality beer, is that? That is a top quality beer. I mean, this came well, well recommended on the uh, the ice cream vans out. <laughs> you keep your ice cream, mate. I'm sticking with this. Um, yeah, this came well recommended on the Perfect Draft Facebook group that I'm on. Um, one of the best beers to come out of Germany, and I'll have yeah, no arguments from me with this. This is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Oh. Yeah, if you want an education in good quality lager, good quality German beer, then it's low and brow on perfect draft that you want to be going for. Right, okay, so we are trying out Tiny Rebels latest. On perfect draft the pineapple express ipa as you can see we have we have an actual tiny rebel pine glass to have it in so let's have a look we can see it's a lovely hazy color like orangey a lovely orangey color uh just over a fingertip of foam there does it smell of pineapple it does actually it smells wonderful lovely lovely fruity pineapple pineapple smell pineapple is that a word I believe so, is yes. pineapple a word? I believe so, yes, well. I think it is now, yes. Right, let's give it a taste. You know that? When I get all the, the colours in. And that's brilliant. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, Tiny Rebels brought this out at the right time, to be honest. It's a lovely, fruity, refreshing beer. The problem is with the uh, key lime lager that they did last year. They brought it out just after the summer, and it's kind of like if they'd have done that a few months sooner, they'd have they'd have been a lot more successful. But that that is fantastic. Big thumbs up. Big thumbs up indeed. So again, I understand that this one is also a seasonal beer and only gets brewed every so often. Um, so I usually I, I got this sort of during like the the, the summer months, and I should imagine that now by the time I'm coming to review it, it's probably a little short on stock now. Um, if it does become available on Perfect Draft again, then I recommend you certainly grab some. I certainly will be doing so. Um, it is available in cans direct from Tiny Rebel or Yield Brown though, so if you want to try it in cans, you've got that option. Um, but again, it's a seasonal beer so it only gets brewed in the Perfect Draft machine every so often. 
And then finally we've got old favourite Corona Extra. Um, I've only just loaded this cake, hence the reason why the head is a little on the large side. Uh, but that will soon settle. Now I have ordered kegs of Corona Extra before when they were on special offer. Hence the reason why I've got myself a couple of proper Corona Extra pint glasses to, uh, to add to my increasing beer glass collection. Right, last one then. Corona Extra. Nice sort of golden colour to it. The head's calmed down a little bit now. In fact, I could probably do it topping that up to be honest, make it a full pint, but never mind. Lovely aroma, like a lovely sort of, sort of fruity, almost like a honey aroma to it. Very nice, very pleasant to smell. But never mind the smell, what's it like to drink? Let's give it a go. Delicious, light, crisp, refreshing, ideal summer beer. The type of beer you'd have at a party, a barbecue. Absolutely spot on. And on perfect draft, even better. Cheers. So, the first keg going into the perfect draft machine is the Spaten Munchen Hell Premium Lager. This is brewed at the Francis Carner Lowenbrow Brewery these days, uh, and those are two beers that I've really enjoyed on Perfect Draft in the past, and ones that I have reviewed previously on this channel. I've been trying to get hold of a keg of this for a while so that I could review it. It does tend to be one of the most popular beers that is sold on Beerhawk's website, and often it will get sold out. They also do an Oktoberfest version of this as well, which is even harder to get hold of. But I'll try and get hold of some of that for a future episode if I can. So, beer in the glass, and it has to be a German style uh, Stein beer glass for something like this. It has to be done. And um, essentially, the reason why is because this is the same beer that you would get if you were drinking in Germany. It's the same quality. Uh, in the glass, we're getting two fingers of white foamy head and slow moving carbonation. It's a good looking quality beer, uh, clear, light and crisp. On the aroma, it really does smell fantastic. Crisp and lemony with slight biscuity malts. When we come to taking a drink, the light, crisp biscuity malts really come through into the flavour. Then it goes on to a wonderfully hoppy bitterness at the back end. Uh, not overly hoppy, but spicy and peppery. This is a wonderful lager to drink, excellent quality, and I'm very pleased that I've finally been able to get hold of a keg of this to review and enjoy. Again, this is the same stuff that's served in German bars, and I'm sat here in my pub shed in Yorkshire, and I'm essentially drinking the same stuff that you would get if you went to Oktoberfest, if you went to Germany and sat in a bar and had a pint of this stuff yourself. This is exactly the reason why it's worth getting a perfect draft machine. Once you've got one of these, you'll never look back and you'll soon realise what a good quality lager truly tastes like, especially a good quality German lager. And if you like the look of this, make sure to check out my previous videos for reviews of Lohenbrau and Franziskana as well on Perfect Draft. So next up we're going to try out the Goose Island IPA. This is an American IPA from the Goose Island Beer Company in Chicago, Illinois. I may as well use another glass with a handle for this one. And uh, my motorhead glass tankard will do the job just nicely here. After another quality pour into the glass, we're getting an amber coloured beer with good levels of carbonation and two fingers of white foamy head. We're getting a very pleasant aroma of grapefruit, citrus and pine. Upon taking a drink, we're getting some good biscuity malt on the taste with a little bit of sweetness coming through. Then it's all about the hops on the back end. Grapefruit, pine, citrus, lemon, orange, tangerine. It's a wonderful body of beer. Very drinkable. Terrific stuff. Goose Island have got several beers on Perfect Draft, including Golden Goose Lager. So maybe I'll be reviewing uh, some of those in a future video. For any American watcher of this show that wants to step away from travesties like Budweiser and Miller, I would seriously point them in the direction of Goose Island. And finally for this video, we have Jupiler Pils Lager, the most famous and most popular beer in Belgium. And that's saying a lot, considering the number of Belgian beers that I've covered on this channel so far. With that in mind, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and pour this into a Stella Artois chalice. 
but uh, there is a connection between the two, which I'll go on to in a moment. So getting this into the glass, we're getting a light golden coloured beer with about two fingers of coloured head and some slow moving carbonation. We're getting a light, crisp, malty aroma coming through, which is very pleasant. And then onto the taste. It's crisp and refreshing with that slight malty, biscuity taste coming through. Then it's a little bit hot on the back end, again, spicy and peppery. Overall, it's a wonderful pint of beer. As I mentioned earlier, Dupla is the preferred lager in Belgium. Yes, Stella is very popular as well, but this is a far superior pint, in my opinion. Far superior. This beer is sold in cans and bottles over here in the United Kingdom, but in the perfect draft, it's a much better quality beer. Essentially, like what I mentioned with the Spaten earlier on in this video, this is a keg beer. So what you've got here is the exact same if you were stood in a bar, in this case, stood in a bar in Belgium, and ordering it. It's the same with Stella Artois on Perfect Draft, which, bringing in that connection, the two of them are actually made by the same brewery these days. But um, like with Stella, and like with, with this, with Jupiter, there is a world of difference between having this in the keg. Uh, if you've only ever had Stella or Jupiter in a can or bottle, then you really do need to try it on Perfect Draft. So, good levels of carbonation, as expected. This is a slightly hazier style than what we've seen before. Uh, about a single fingertip of foamy white head. I'm getting a touch of yeast on the aroma. Uh, sweet, biscuity malt with a nice spicy, uh, he uh, peppery hop on, on the nose. Some uh, wonderful lacing on the glass too. Right, that's quite enough of standing back and admiring it. Uh, What's it like on the taste? Well, it's lovely and smooth with the biscuity malts coming through in the flavour, along with a slightly bitter tang, uh, very spicy and hoppy on the back end. It's really flavoursome uh, and very drinkable, and it leaves a wonderful mouthfeel as well. I actually think that I prefer this to the original Stella. So I really hope that this isn't a limited edition release and that Stella continues to make this for the perfect draft. It really is a brilliant beer. And uh, I would thoroughly recommend getting hold of a, of a keg or two. This is the officially licensed beer of the television programme Peaky Blinders. And I've even got a branded glass or two to drink this from. So, uh, in the glass, it's a golden amber coloured beer, slightly hazy with some gentle amounts of carbonation. Um, it really does look amazing in the glass, it, it really does. Uh, you get about two fingers of foamy white head. Uh, on the aroma, you've got the sweet, fruity smells of grapefruit and orange peel. Oh, fantastic. On the taste, it's got more of an old school traditional English ale vibe rather than an IPA. It's uh, sweet and lemony and biscuity to begin with, followed by a nice, gentle, citrusy lemon bitterness. It's very drinkable and leaves a very pleasant mouthfeel. It's a good bodied, nicely balanced beer with a creamy finish. And uh, drinking this, I'm reminded exactly why I've uh, gone through a few kegs of this and not got round to reviewing it. it. It does go down very well indeed. And uh, again, it's been brewed by Thornbridge for a TV series and you might be tempted to think, right, okay, so this is a tie-in to something. It's a tie-in to a TV programme. How good is this actually going to be? And the answer is, well, actually, very good indeed. They've really put some thought into this beer to make sure that this is something that people will enjoy. Thornbridge have started showing up in the likes of Tesco, Sainsbury's and other popular supermarkets, so getting hold of some Shelby isn't going to be particularly difficult. But I do thoroughly recommend trying it on Perfect Draft as well. It makes for a wonderfully drinkable and balanced IPA, lovely and biscuity and bready. It certainly got my attention. If that was their intention, Thorbridge, to get people's attention, well, it certainly worked for me. And it's got me trying out some of their other beers as a result of this. And you'll probably end up being the same once you've uh, had some of this. Next up, we have an Italian lager, Lisa which is a bit of an odd name for an Italian lager. It's probably the least Italian name for a beer I've ever come across. You've got your obvious ones, like your Peroni and your Beer Amaretti, 
but yet in this scene, sounds like I'm having a conversation with my wife. Yes, her name's Lisa as well. Of course, the name Lisa is actually an abbreviation. It stands for Larga Italiana Simplicement Atreus. Good God, I've probably butchered the pronunciation of that. Anyway, never mind about what the name is, what's it like? So, we're getting a lovely paw here. Very active in the glass, lots of carbonation going off there. Almost like a, a straw coloured beer in the glass, but it's, it's a little darker than that, a little darker than being straw coloured. It's a nice clear looking beer with a compact creamy white head of foam, about a finger's worth. Good lacing on the glass too. Straight away you're getting hit with a gorgeous citrusy lemony aroma with a touch of pepper and malt. Again, this is another, like with Shelby, this is a keg that I've had in a few times. Uh, you probably have seen this being mentioned in previous episodes of Beer Club. I definitely referred to it in the uh, December Christmas 2020 episode. And uh, yes, I'm only just getting around to reviewing it. But again, it's one of these kegs. I keep getting them in and I thoroughly enjoy them. And I end up drinking it all before uh, I get around to filming any footage for it. So yeah, uh, lemon on the taste at its first hit. Uh, there's, there's maltiness in there. It's like a typical... Uh, lager taste but it's very drinkable it's light it's very crisp it's very refreshing we haven't covered many Italian beers here on beer club but um, out of all of them yeah this is this is the best one we've, we've covered so far uh, the Lisa citrus finish gives it something different it's got that orange peel in there it's it's wonderful it's, it's a wonderfully tasting lager it's i'd say it's probably similar to beer moretti but it's far better than a beer moretti it, it takes what beer moretti has and just ups its game up by it so much more it's it's certainly got a lot more depth to it than, than that in terms of of it overall for me italian beers are never going to be able to compete with your german beers or your uh, Belgian beers, of which I've reviewed here before. I mean, you try and put this up against a, a Spartan or a Lauenbrau, there's there's no competition. But as an Italian beer, it does do the job very nicely. And again, this is definitely the best Italian beer that we've reviewed on the channel so far. And then finally, ahoy there! What do we do with a drunken sailor? Why, we drink it, of course. Last upon this video, we have Crew Republic's Drunken Sailor IPA. A, a handcrafted German IPA. And yes, as mentioned before, I do love my German beers here on Beer Club. And you can tell straight away from getting this little beauty poured into the glass that this is a quality product. A slightly hazy, almost golden amber coloured beer with just over a fingertips worth of off-white foam and with plenty of carbonation running throughout the glass. On the aroma, you're getting a big hit of caramel and those floral Cinco hops. Upon diving in, we're getting a very sweet and very malty taste. It's a medium mouthfeel, uh, quite sweet and creamy, a little bit heavier than what you'd expect an IPA to be. Um, there's a pleasant bitterness on the back end as well. To say that this has got an ABV of 6.4%, it certainly isn't overpowering. Um, the alcohol has been hidden very well. Uh, it's very drinkable, it, it goes down very well, and I'm very glad that I bought this. Uh, a lot of good things were said about this on this uh, Perfect Draft Facebook group that I'm part of. And uh, getting it in and trying it out for myself, well, it certainly hasn't disappointed. Direct from Wales, Tiny Rebels Club Tropica IPA is one of the very first kegs I ever got on Perfect Draft, yet I'm only just reviewing it now, which should give you an idea of how good it is. I've uh, previously ended up drinking it all before I've had a chance to review it, and to be fair, I have become a big fan of Tiny Rebel ever since, and I've reviewed a number of their beers on this channel previously. So. Here's the beer. As you can see, we have ourselves a proper Tiny Rebel pint glass to pour this into, uh, as well as a Tiny Rebel bar topper. I got these as part of a special offer when I bought the cakes uh, originally from, uh, from Beer Hawk. Uh, I'm sure I've shown these off 
on a uh, previous video. But uh, anyway, in the glass we've got ourselves a nice hazy looking beer with about a finger of fluffy white foam. And uh, already in the glass it smells amazing, absolutely amazing. There's lots of tropical fruity aromas, mango, pineapple, grapefruit, fantastic. And then on to the taste. It's lovely and refreshing and fruity. There's a burst of delicious tropical flavors with a hoppy bitterness on the back end. It's an excellent sessionable IPA. And I am reminded exactly why this is one of my favorites on Perfect Draft. I really could drink this all evening, quite easily. A sweet fruity beer with a dry bit of finish. It's definitely one to enjoy in the garden on a hot sunny day particularly if you're having a party with friends. Um, what a shame that uh, at the time that I'm reviewing this particular keg, the weather looks like this. <sighs> okay, time to change the keg. I've demonstrated a number of times on my channel how to change the keg on a perfect draft machine and it's a very easy process to follow. Be sure to check out some of the other videos on the perfect draft playlist that's on my channel for a demonstration of how to do this. Okay we are now going from a tropical IPA from Wales to a Weiss beer from Germany. It's the Francis Carner Royale and I've had a Francis Carner before here on the channel. Um, it was reviewed as part of a previous uh, Perfect Draft uh, related uh, review. Um, and I really enjoyed that, really, really found that to be uh, a fantastic beer. But I've also been wanting to try out the, uh, the Royal version for a while. It's, um, it's a popular one that often gets sold out on Beerhawk's website. You won't always see this particular beer in the United Kingdom. Like say if you go into a bar or a club or, a, or just a good old fashioned pub, you will, you'll likely see the regular Francis Kana in some places, but the Royal, not quite so much. So this really is your best way of getting hold of this beer. And um, yeah, again, it's another reason to get a perfect draft machine. And uh, yes, uh, as you can see here from the footage, I simply had to get out the big German style Stein glass for this one. So, beer in the glass, and look at it. Wow. Already you can tell just from looking at this that it's going to be a delicious full bodied beer. It really does look absolutely stunning. Uh, on the aroma we're getting the sweet smells of banana and candy which might seem unusual for a beer but uh, bear in mind I've had sort of Belgian beers on the channel before and a lot of them have had that sort of same sweet sort of banana aroma as well. Um, there's also like a hint of, of pepper, pepperiness in there as well. Um, really does smell absolutely cracking and going on to the taste it's uh, it's malty it's biscuity it's bready it's hoppy uh, I'm getting that sweet taste of banana in there as well along with that wonderful spiciness it all makes for this fantastic full body of beer with a lovely lovely creamy mouthfeel oh wonderful wonderful stuff really is tremendous and uh, again a big reminder of what you would get a perfect draft machine for. Um, I'm reminded of the original Francis Carner that we've covered previously on the channel but uh, the, the Royal is like that but turned up a few notches. It uh, really does make for one of the best Weiss beers that I've reviewed on the channel. Indeed one of the best German beers I've reviewed full stop. So that is uh, high praise indeed. Uh, highly, highly recommended uh, on both of these kegs. So that is it for another perfect draft review. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please do leave a like and a comment. Uh, also check out my perfect draft playlists for more reviews of, uh, of kegs available for this machine. Uh, please also consider sharing this video across your various social media platforms, in particular those that have got anything to do with Perfect Draft. 
um, craft, craft beer, real ale, etc, etc. Um, and be sure to subscribe to the channel as well to see more videos just like this. But for now, thank you very much for stopping by the Mabba's Tavern and we'll catch you again next time.